saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Once again, good evening and welcome to our seventh BSN pinning ceremony. Very exciting stuff. And I'd like you to please join me in welcoming my friend, Reverend Israel Suarez, who will provide the invocation. Dr. Suarez. Thank you, Father God, for the blessing that you give to us. Number one, a being in America. And knowing that our country respect education and giving the opportunity to do those good for themselves. And I ask you that you can bless this institution. I ask you that you can bless each one of the people that we in this particular time. And I could tell you, God, thank you. Because it's always opportunity to do better. And I ask you that you can bless this student that can, that can move on for the cell to do good. Please, Father God, be in this event and bless this event in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you, Reverend Suarez. Is this a great assembly or what? <laughs> so nursing faculty, Mrs. Thelma Hodges, special guests, the Thelma Hodges nursing program, April 2023 graduating class, and all their family and friends. Welcome. So our nursing students have worked very, very hard to reach this goal this evening, to get to this pinning ceremony. The pinning ceremonies are sort of like graduation ceremonies. It does not mean that you don't have to come to commencement ceremony, because you do. Just keep that in mind. Put that on your calendars. Thank you. But this is a special ceremony that we do for nursing students, a pinning ceremony, and it has a special kind of meaning that you'll learn more about as we go through the evening. They've worked very hard to get here, but some of our faculty and staff work very hard to build what I believe is truly an exceptional nursing program. It's a BSN program for starters. And nurses are special and gifted people. And nursing itself, of course, is both an art and a science. It's a science in that a nurse needs to know things like anatomy and physiology of the human body, but he or she also has to know, you know biology and pharmacology and some math and enough psychology to successfully deal with the kind of irascible patient that I can easily be. And the art of nursing is reflected in the tough love brought to the craft, along with the understanding of patients' emotional and spiritual needs in order to render compassionate care but complete care for both the patient and his or her loved ones. And most importantly, nurses must be able to do this day in and day out while remembering to take care of their own mental and physical health and well-being. And that's why I became, went into academics and became a university president instead of becoming a nurse because I figured it was a way easier path. And we're fortunate tonight to have with us a wonderful example of that caring and compassion in Thelma Hodges, who is and was a trailblazer. Uh, she came down to Southwest Florida from some dreadful place like Massachusetts uh, to be one of the starting nurses, original nurses at Naples Community Hospital, and she came with her sister. So that's a really cool thing. And uh, it was in Naples when Naples was a teeny tiny dot on the map, and there were dirt roads and not a lot of power poles, and certainly no condominiums and uh, no vacationers. And she chose to be a nurse and was really very instrumental in the university's decision to start a, the RPSN. 
So thank you very much. So it's now my distinct pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Nash, our nursing program director. Dr. Nash. She's also responsible for competency management as well. 
And Janice is passionate about standardized education and programs, professional development, collaboration, and implementation of programs. Uh, Janice resides in Fort Myers with her husband, two daughters, and three golden doodles. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming Janice to the podium. introduction. I will apologize in advance. I have had a cold this week, so my voice is a bit raspy at times, but I have a cough drop, so I'm hoping not to cough and spare all of you. But it is truly an honor to be here this evening. Congratulations to all of you. Um, what an accomplishment. So truly, congratulations, Hodges, uh, Nursing Class of 2023. Let's give them all a round of applause. You should be so proud of yourselves. I know that you couldn't have gotten here without the support of those closest to you. So once again, let's give a round of applause to those in the audience who've supported you through this journey. <laughs> 20 years ago, I was sitting in a similar spot to all of you. I was attending my own pinning ceremony in upstate New York. There was a bit of a difference in temperature, um, but other than that, things were pretty similar. As I prepared after the speech, I really thought about my own pinning ceremony and what that meant to me. It's truly a rite of passage. This is such a great event for you to celebrate. This means that you are now a distinguished uh, profession that, one, as we mentioned earlier, regarded once again as the most trusted profession. That is an amazing career that you've chosen and that you're about to embark on. So as I sat here preparing for this speech, I thought about my own pinning ceremony, and during that time, I actually chose my grandmother to pin me, and I shared that with you all in the lobby. So my grandmother was a huge influence in my life growing up. Um, she is still alive today. She's 92 years old. She'll be 93 this November. And we were able to choose someone um, that we thought, you know, was important to us or that we felt was special to us. So my grandmother, for me, possessed all of the qualities that I thought um, not only that I thought of her as a great person, but also that made a really good nurse. Some of those qualities are she was a good listener, she was patient, she was humble, and she was trusting. As I go through these qualities a little bit more in depth, I hope that you will all be able to connect with them throughout your journey as you embark on this new, um, new adventure through your career. So being humble, I encourage all of you to remain humble. Remember what it's like to be a student to be a new face on a unit or in a new area. You could probably remember being the new face on a unit and how difficult that is. So there's always something to learn, there's always something to see, there's always something to show somebody. But be the face for that new person. Remember that. Please don't forget that as you move on in your career, you were once where that student is. And you have so much to teach them. Don't, yourself, don't sell yourself short. Even six months from now, you'll always have something to share with somebody. You'll have an experience or an expertise in something. So always remain grounded in who you are. Don't lose sight of that. A great listener. A great listener is one who listens to his or her patient. Listening is a strategy. You're asking questions that are intentional, appropriate. And when the patient is responding, you listen to hear them. As I stated above, Remaining curious will allow you to seek the information that you may need to take the best care of your patient. But as you ask questions, listen to hear your patient's response. Not just the answer you're looking for, but truly hear them out. As you listen, you form a bond, you build relationships, and that's where trust is built. Your patients trust you, you are his or her advocate. That is the start of the human connection. Trust, your patients trust you and your opinions. When you're not sure of the answer, have confidence to seek the answers from your peers, your superiors, your leaders. You will be a better nurse because you did not make a hasty decision. Research, ask questions, stay curious. Always remember that someone's life is in your hands and that's not something that should ever be taken lightly. Being an advocate for your patient is something that you will pride yourself on. You will be seen as an advocate, your patients will become stronger because of you. 
the decisions that you help them make and the situations that you work through with them. That bond of trust will continue to grow. Patient, be patient with yourselves. You're all embarking on a new career, a new adventure. You will be the novice. You will have a lot to learn, but stay motivated, consistent, and remember that good things take time. And to do things correctly, that takes time. You know, we have a philosophy in nursing. You must learn one, teach one, do one. That will make you a master in time. But again, this does not happen overnight. Remain patient when the, with those that you are caring for and their families, as we know. Families sometimes are a lot. I've been that family member. Not always pleasant, but we know that they have not been set up for the situation that they're put into, so we always have to remember that we are surrounding ourselves with someone on their darkest days. There may be days that are tough in nursing, but I promise you, when you go in with the right attitude, your great days of feeling fulfilled and pride in your role will far outweigh the bad days. As you listen to me today, I'm sure much of this resonates with you in one respect or another. Keep, please keep these behaviors close to you as you embark on this journey. Your greatest investment you can make in yourself is your education. No one can take this away from you. Invest in yourself time and time again. Read articles, look for avenues of continued education, advancement opportunities, and professional development. Let the team around you know that, that you're interested in learning and growing. Seek the information, be a super user, a resource, a preceptor, a charge nurse, sit for a specialty certification. Never stop learning and investing in yourself. My grandmother is so many things, as you can see from what I listed above. She has some qualities that are great attributes for a nurse. She is so much more than that. I know that all of you possess these qualities and so much more. So please be proud of yourself and the work that you've put in. You're all amazing. I called my grandmother in preparation for this talk tonight and asked her, if she had words of advice um, or anything that I could share with all of you. She reflected back on how different nursing is today than it was in 1957 uh, when she started out. Her focus was so much more practical in all situations. She was taught to seek opportunities for OR experiences, clinical practice for autopsies, surgical procedures. Her instructors um, let her know and her classmates that they needed to quote unquote date the profession, take any opportunity you can and seek it out. So she did a lot of that on her own time. But she did recall a nursing instructor, Miss McCauley, who was extremely influential and left her classmates with a lasting impression. Miss McCauley said to my grandmother's class regularly, and still at 92, she can vividly remember this statement. Miss McCauley stated to them, in quotes, the aim is to teach, is to turn each of you into such efficient nurses that in the future, if you become 100% careless, you will still get a passing grade in any situation. Those words ring true. You have nursing instructors who have gotten you to where you are today, but it's going to take the extra mile for you all to invest in yourselves to continue that after you become registered nurses and pass your NCLEX. So I hope for all of you that you practice above the level of good each and every day, that you go the extra mile, that you stay patient with yourselves, you seek the information that you need, you double and triple check everything, you seek advice as necessary, never forget where you came from. As you grow in your career, I hope this advice stays with you. Miss McCauley isn't instructing anymore, but her perspective rings true. Thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. And I hope that you love nursing as much as I do and have, and that you know every day your care and influence is changing someone's life. Congratulations. Pleasure to introduce our student speaker, Alison Rodriguez. Okay. 
here with me. Tear up here. <laughs> okay. Hello, and thank you everyone for being here. I wanted to take everyone down this memory lane real quick. At the beginning of our nursing school journey, we learned several concepts and frameworks that we used in every class every day. For example, we learned the nursing process, our ABCs, and Maslow's hierarchy of needs, to name a few. But more importantly, more specifically, I wanted to talk about the concept of risk versus benefit. This is something that we all do unconsciously as we make decisions. Probably one of the more significant choices we ever made prior to January 2022 was to take the leap and apply to nursing school. In Professor Joyce's fundamentals class, we learned the risk versus benefit of proper test taking techniques and if you have two oranges, which is more orange? <laughs> With Professor Cobble's research class, we use risk versus benefit daily. But more importantly, it was the risk versus benefit of being consumers of research and trusting the process in that they're not trying to trick you. <laughs> we learned the risk versus benefit that pink frothy sputum is and always will be the manifestation of pulmonary edema in Professor Kant's class, among a lot of other things we learned from her. We also use this concept with every single part of Professor Watkins' pharmacology class. We would ask many questions, but the bottom line for taking a medication typically was risk versus benefit. We took the risk of learning the effects and benefits of medications and hormones on GABA in Professor Eva's mental health class. Within Professor Swinson's maternal newborn and pediatrics class, every single move and decision made has a direct effect on the client. Therefore, we found ourselves asking two questions. What's in a veal chop? And what is the risk versus benefit of this intervention? In Dr. D's class, we learn the effects of risk versus benefit on health promotion and education in our communities, and even more so with Antoinette. We learn the risk versus benefit of asking the right questions in order to guide a provider's next step towards a correct diagnosis. In Professor Schneider's transition to professional nursing class, we learned the risk versus benefit of NCLEX preparation. And finally, with Dr. Nash, we learned the risk versus benefit of being great nursing leader managers and their effects on others. But I want to bring to your attention that none of this could have been possible if we didn't take that first risk of taking the T's exam and applying to nursing school, but also taking the risk of being open-minded, persevering, having vulnerability, and making connections. If not, we couldn't have benefited from our experiences in and out of the classroom, on our clinical rotations, or from the relationships formed with one another. And I wouldn't have it any other way. We still have an entire future of risk and benefits ahead of us, but my classmates and I just wanted to show our appreciation and say thank you to our friends, families, and clinical instructors for their endless support for us throughout this journey. My classmates and I also wanted to give a big shout out to Professor Camp, who has been there with us <coughs> in each semester since the beginning. Sorry. <laughs> we want to say thank you for always supporting us and encouraging us during the hardest times of our lives. And we couldn't have done it without you on our support team.
I'm so proud of us. Good job, guys. Thank you. This award is presented to one of our graduates for outstanding academic achievement. This student earned the highest GPA in her nursing classes. And for this year, the Thelma T. Hodges Award of Excellence goes to Allison Rodriguez. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. 
family and friends, faculty, professors, instructors, and mentors. Thank you for coming and being here tonight to celebrate this milestone with me. Before I get further into my set, I want to recognize today's most important people. I want to take a moment to thank my family and friends who are accompanying me in this beautiful moment. I want to mention an extraordinary person for me who has become like my second mother, Reba. Thank you for always guiding me and allowing me to be by, my, by your side. But today, I want to also dedicate this moment to my father, who awoke this passion for nursing career that has always lasted in, it, in me. <clears throat> father, you have been my example to follow with that optimistic attitude that characterizes you. You have never stopped trying, even when you face the most difficult challenges. My mother and you taught me moral values and above all, honesty. I feel fortunate and grateful and cannot find words to thank you for all the valuable work you have done for me during this year. Gordon. I would like to dedicate my tribute to my boyfriend, Christian. Christian, I couldn't have asked for a better support system than what you have given me for these past 16 months. You continued confidence in me, never went unnoticed, and I am so grateful to have had you in my side. <clears throat> I never would have pictured myself graduating with a bachelor's degree in nursing, but here I am today, in which I thank you for continue, your continued support and motivation. beginning our graduates now and lighting the lamps and then we'll be reading the nursing pledge so students when I call your name please come up to accept your pin Dr. Nash Sam Arney Jordan Powell. 
Packard. are time-honored traditions that began in the 1860s and are seen as a rite of passage from nursing school into the nursing profession. This is something all of our Hodges University BSN students look forward to as it is a milestone in their education and nursing journey. The lamp you see today symbolizes the care and devotion of nursing graduates that will provide to the ill and injured. The lamp also represents Nightingale's night rounding to signify dedication to her clients in the nursing field. After graduating, after graduate nurses were penned, Florence Nightingale would light the lamp and pass the flame to the nursing graduates. The lighting of the lamp represents nursing instructors passing on their knowledge to nursing graduates. an adaptation of the Hippocratic Oath taken by physicians was composed by Lystra Grutter, an instructor of nursing at the Old Harper Hospital in Detroit, Michigan, and was first used by its graduating class in the spring of 1893. Following is an adaptation of the original pledge for nurses in the 21st century. I solemnly pledge myself before God in the presence of this assembly to practice my profession faithfully. I will not knowingly administer any harmful drug or treatment. I will do all in my power to elevate the standards of my profession and will hold in confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping. I will honor each individual under my care with the knowledge that they are body, mind, and spirit beings. I will be an advocate and a healer. 
I will work to promote wellness in individuals, families, and communities. I commit myself to evidence-based practice, the ongoing pursuit of knowledge, and the welfare of those committed to my care. Thank you, Alana. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Diana Schultz for our closing remarks. Uh, she is the Senior Vice President of Academic Affairs and Provost at Hodges University. Thank you, Dr. Mash. Graduates, do you remember your first day of class as a college university nursing student. You may uh, have been a little nervous about the journey you were starting. You probably had many questions about this path, but there was one question you had already answered. Yes, I want to be a nurse. And now uh, you're here tonight, ready to take all that you have learned and provide patients with the excellent care they deserve. I would like to thank our faculty who have been uh, with you since their first day at Hodges University. They have shared their knowledge, their expertise, and their love of the profession with you. And would all the faculty please stand once more and everyone please, please give them a hand. to become a nurse is a road that no one can travel alone. Students, I am sure you lean on family and friends to help you travel this road. Family and friends, thank you. Thank you for your support. hard work that each of you have put in to reach your goal. And there will be countless patients, I'm sure, that will be so thankful for your professionalism, expertise, and care. Soon, you'll be taking the dreaded NCLEX. And that exam, I'm confident that each of you will do well in. So. Now go and conquer that NCLEX. And congratulations. <laughs> so congratulations, students. Families and friends, please remain seated as the graduates exit the room for their uh, class photo. And uh, we invite you to stay uh, for refreshments afterwards. Thank you.